With a history spanning nearly 55 years, Star Trek has become a television and film institution. As the decades have rolled by, many of the actors who brought these immortal characters to life have reached the end of their own lives, leaving behind an unforgettable legacy. Here are some Star Trek actors you forgot passed away. Okay, okay, you probably didn't forget this one. Despite possessing a humorless, cold, and logical demeanor, Spock is the heart of all things Trek, and much of the credit for that goes to Leonard Nimoy. When not acting, Nimoy was also a poet, an artist, a photographer, and a musician. And his relationship with the character of Spock could be complicated at times. His first autobiography, for example, was titled I Am Not Spock, whereas the 1995 follow-up was called I Am Spock. He later described himself as feeling a sort of mystical identification with the intellectual pointy-eared alien, once writing that, in Spock, I finally found the best of both worlds, to be widely accepted in public approval, and yet to be able to continue to play the insulated alien through the Vulcan character. To the great sadness of the world sci-fi fans, Leonard Nimoy passed away in 2015 at the age of 83. His wife, Susan Bay Nimoy, attributed his death to end-stage chronic pulmonary disease. During his twilight years, Nimoy had continued bringing Spock to life as the elderly Spock Prime version of the character in the rebooted Star Trek movies. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? Our minds, one and together. To honor his legacy, the 2016 film Star Trek Beyond made a point to write the Vulcan's death into the script and to show the impact of his demise upon the younger version of the character, then played by Zachary Quinto. The Delta navigator Ilya never got the chance to become a recurring character in Star Trek, but she nonetheless played a key role in Star Trek The Motion Picture. At the time, Ilya's shaved head was a bold statement for cinema, and according to The Independent, she was the first bald heroine in film history. The daring actress who brought her to life was Persis Kambata, an international model from Mumbai who in 1965 had been awarded the title of Miss India. Kambata entered the acting world through an array of Hindi-language films before making her Hollywood debut in the 1975 flick The Will Be Conspiracy, co-starring Sidney Poitier and Michael Caine. Playing Ilya in Star Trek proved to be her breakout performance, eventually leading to her becoming the first-ever Indian performer to present an award at the Oscars. However, when she was offered a role in the next James Bond movie, she rejected it out of a vow to her mother that she would return back home. Throughout her life and career, Kambata remained a private person who never sought out the spotlight. Sadly, in 1998, she suffered a fatal heart attack at just 49 years old. In Star Trek history, few deaths have been as tragic or shockingly sad as the accidental loss of Anton Yelchin, who portrayed the young genius Pavel Chekhov in the post-reboot Trek films. The Russian-born actor, known for the boyish charm and quick wit he displays in films like Odd Thomas and Charlie Bartlett, seemed destined for a long and great career. Sadly, it all ended in 2016, when a freak car accident ended his life at the age of 27. The circumstances involved Yelchin's 2015 Jeep Grand Cherokee shifting backwards without warning down his driveway. Yelchin was out of the car, and the vehicle trapped his body between his mailbox and security fence, leaving him pinned until he died. The ensuing legal battle between Fiat Chrysler, the makers of Jeep vehicles, and Yelchin's parents went on for years. The family maintained that the SUV's gearshift mechanism had been to blame for their son's death. As it happened, this mechanism had caused a number of other incidents over the years. The two parties reached a settlement in 2018. The Ferengi were some of the funniest characters ever featured on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, known for being the greediest capitalist in a galaxy that had mostly abandoned the concept of money. But the character of young Nog, as played by Aaron Eisenberg, proved that you can never paint all people of a certain culture with the same brush. Contrary to his manipulative Uncle Quark, Nog was a boy who formed a genuine friendship with an Earthling, Jake Sisko, and even went on to become the first Ferengi to join Starfleet. Sadly, while actor Aaron Eisenberg did snag a few other roles over the years, he also suffered through a number of severe health traumas in the decades following his Trek days. Eisenberg endured two separate kidney transplant operations, with the second occurring in 2015. Tragically, in late 2019, his wife Melissa Longo shared on Facebook that Eisenberg had passed away at age 50, saying of her late husband, he was an intelligent, humble, funny, emphatic soul. He sought to live his life with integrity and truth. Always ready, always effective, and always looking out for the little guy, many doctors today have credited Leonard H. Bones McCoy with having inspired them to take the leap and attend medical school. Amusingly enough, while it's now impossible to imagine Bones played by anyone other than DeForest Kelly, Gene Roddenberry initially offered the actor a choice between playing either McCoy or Spock. I'm not a magician, Spock. Just an old country doctor. In retrospect, Kelly definitely made the right decision. Even after the original series and after the first wave of movies, Kelly went on to serve as the bridge between the 60s crew and the then-newcomers featured in Star Trek The Next Generation. 
The last few years of Kelly's life were plagued by health problems, with his final months spent in a convalescent home in Woodland Hills, California. In 1999, he died at the age of 79 of complications arising from stomach cancer, which he had suffered from for 18 months. As any Star Trek diehard will tell you, the show's original pilot episode, The Cage, was a little different from the series that eventually came around. For one, the commander of the Enterprise was not James Kirk, but rather Christopher Pike. Pike's first officer was a woman named Number One, played by actress Majel Barrett, who was cold, distant, and logical back when Spock was still relatively cheery. However, Number One's high-ranking position on the Enterprise, as well as her calculated demeanor, chafed with NBC producers, so the character was promptly kicked off the bridge. Since then, both Pike and Number One have become fan-favorite characters, courtesy of their revival on Star Trek Discovery, with the latter now portrayed by Rebecca Romaine. Back in the show's early days, Barrett went on to become a major part of Trek history, not just as the wife of creator Gene Roddenberry, but also as the ship's nurse, Christine Chapel. Barrett Roddenberry continued to play Chapel in the movies, and later cut loose as Laxwana Troy on both Star Trek The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. Throughout all of this, she also played the familiar voice of the Enterprise computer throughout various different shows in the franchise. Major Barrett Roddenberry passed away in late 2008 at the age of 76 after a long battle with leukemia. Brock Peters was a legendary actor, most recognized for playing the wrongly accused man Tom Robinson in the classic adaptation of To Kill a Mockingbird. He had many roles over the years, but among Star Trek fans, he is remembered for the two unrelated parts he brought to life. First, he portrayed Admiral Cartwright in Star Trek IV The Voyage Home and Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country. Second, he entered the world of Deep Space Nine as Creole Master Chef Joseph Sisko. Though Peter's Deep Space Nine appearances were infrequent, his character's energy, positivity, and loving dedication to family were clear influences on his son, Captain Sisko a character who has since been ranked by many diehard Trekkers as their favorite Star Trek captain of all time. In his old age, Peters came down with pancreatic cancer. It finally took his life in 2005 at the age of 78 when he died at his home in Los Angeles. Arguably the most iconic and powerful single antagonist in all of Star Trek lore is Khan Noonien Singh, a character who first premiered in the original series before his titular comeback in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Surely I have made my meaning plain. I mean to avenge myself upon you, Admiral." While Khan's story is interesting enough and surprisingly sympathetic, the secret ingredient behind the character's enduring popularity was the masterful acting ability of Ricardo Montalban. Montalban was one of the pioneering Mexican-born actors in Hollywood who worked hard to overcome the prejudices of his time. When Montalban achieved his own degree of success, he funneled it into his nonprofit, the Nos Ostros Foundation, in an effort to create new opportunities in the motion picture business for fellow Latino professionals. He wasn't afraid to call out executives for only casting him in Brazilian, Cuban, and Argentinian roles, but never as a Mexican character, pointing out how the industry continued to portray Mexican people in a stereotypical and negative manner. Between his passionate activism and his talents, Ricardo Montalban left behind an incredible legacy when he died in his L.A. home in 2009 at the age of 88. It's hard to imagine the original Star Trek series working without James Doohan's endearing character Scotty manning the Enterprise's transporters. Doohan, who actually hailed from British Columbia, Canada, continued playing Scotty all the way from the original series to Star Trek The Next Generation, where he befriended the new crew in heartwarming fashion. Dewan's lovable persona, tireless enthusiasm, and ability to fix any malady the ship experienced clearly inspired the performances of every Star Trek chief engineer since, from Miles O'Brien to Charles Tripp Tucker III. Though Dewan lived a long life, his later years were tragically plagued by the onset of Alzheimer's disease. In 2005, he experienced a bout with pneumonia and passed away at the age of 85. From his role as Father Mulcahy in the original film version of M.A.S.H., to an unforgettable performance as the villainous chef in Disney's The Little Mermaid, René Aubergenois carved his name into countless different pop culture smash hits over his long career. Perhaps none of his roles, though, were as well-loved as Odo, the malleable chief security officer of Deep Space Nine, whom he portrayed for seven seasons. While Odo's gruff demeanor immediately positioned him as one of the space station's more offbeat characters, the more that Deep Space Nine peeled back Odo's layers, the more endearing he became. Post-Trek, Aubergenois never stopped acting, just recently starring in the 2019 comedy film Raising Buchanan, where he portrayed the 15th U.S. president. Unfortunately, as with so many Star Trek stars, his life was finally claimed by cancer, in his case, cancer of the lungs. To the sadness of fans all over the world, Aubergenois died in 2019 at the age of 79. Alexander Roshenko, the son of Worf, was a boy who went through a great number of changes and actors as he aged from child to adult. 
The first actor to portray Alexander in Star Trek The Next Generation was a boy named John Paul Stewart, who allegedly nabbed the role because he was the only young man capable of sitting still for three hours while all the Klingon makeup and prosthetic pieces were applied. And although Stewart did take a few more roles over the years, he soon decided that acting wasn't his thing and instead became a successful restaurateur, and more prominently, a musician in the band Problems, where he went by the name Johnny Jules. Sadly, on January 5, 2018, Stewart was pronounced dead at the age of 33. The first reports did not reveal the cause of his passing, but later that year, People magazine announced that Stewart's death had been ruled a suicide. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK-8255.